Donald Trump's chances of winning back the White House look incredibly good right now. He is up 2.3% against Joe Biden, his political rival, who defeated him by 4.5% in the national popular vote back in 2020. However, it is the Electoral College with the states that actually matter in determining who wins the presidential election. So in today's video, I will be taking a look at all the polling from each of the competitive states. Now here is the Electoral College map with all the safe states filled in, as well as the two districts without polling. So the first state we're going to be taking a look at here is going to be the state of Alaska. The state of Alaska has Trump up by about 8% according to polling, not the necessarily the most impressive margin. However, there's a lot of voters who vote third party in the state, and therefore some of these results can't be taken for granted. I do expect Trump to win by more than 8% in the state of Alaska. However, again, Alaska polling tends to not be super accurate, but nonetheless, Alaska is going to be the likely margin in this scenario. Now going to the state of Colorado. Biden's approval of the handling of the Israel and Hamas war has been pretty terrible. A lot of young progressive voters have not really backed Biden with much enthusiasm or plan to stay home. And that is why Biden's polling numbers are not great. He is consistently below 50% in every single one of these polls. Nevertheless, it does show that Joe Biden is winning by somewhere between 3 and 13 points. With all that being said, we can anticipate a Biden victory in the state of Colorado, though it probably won't be as impressive as his 2020 performance. Now going to the state of Florida. Florida looks very good for Donald Trump right now, as as Joe Biden is re really not doing very well in polling. Biden won lost the state to Donald Trump by 3.3% back in 2020. However, the trends do not look very good for Democrats, as the largest county by population in the state, Miami-Dade, trended 22 points away from Joe Biden and towards Donald Trump. Many Hispanic voters are choosing to back Donald Trump in this election, and Trump is only losing the non-back black vote by about 10%, according to the latest New York Times slash Siena College polling. In 2020, Biden won the non-black vote by about 38 percentage points, so that is about a 28% swing. Nonetheless, I do believe that the state of Florida will be right now in the likely Republican column. Now going to the state of Georgia. Georgia saw a remarkably great swing towards Biden in the 2020 election. The state swung from about a Trump plus 5 state to a state that Biden narrowly won. However, this time around, with Biden's lacking performance with minority voters, Trump does look like that he will ultimately win the state by quite a substantial margin. Again, Biden won the state because he was able to do very well in the Atlanta suburbs. However, this time he is not anticipated to do nearly as well with his lacking performance among minority voters. Furthermore, it just does not look too good for Joe Biden, according to many polls. Not a single poll has him ahead against Donald Trump. While every single poll with Trump against Biden, Trump holds consistently a lead ranging from 3% to, to about 9%. So not the best performance for Joe Biden. He will lose the state by a likely margin on this map. Now going to the next state, which will be the state of Iowa. Now going to the state of Iowa here, this is a state that voted for Trump by 8. The performance is pretty similar. Trump won just about half of Iowa primary voters, but nonetheless, that does not seem to be hindering him in the state. It looks very clear that Donald Trump will win the state in 2020, for, which is not very surprising because he won the state by 8% against Joe Biden in 2020. We also see that the rural areas are really backing Trump at huge rates. White non-college educated voters are predominant in the state of Iowa, and that is a group that has been trending towards the Republicans significantly over the past a decade or so. Now going to the next state here, which will be the state of Maine. Now, Maine actually has a lot of random polling that suggests that Trump is anywhere from down 16 points to up 20 points. 
again, the polling in this day of Maine really looks a bit crazy, and it is definitely chaotic. Again, there's no point to actually trust some of these polls. We do see Maine's second district here going to Trump by 20, and Maine's first district actually going to Biden by 8, which is pretty inconsistent, which would suggest that Trump actually wins the state, you can see, by 6%. Polling here does suggest that Biden is up by 1%, and Biden by uh, and Emerson College has Biden up by eleven. I think this is these two polls are closer to the reflection of the actual results. I'm gonna appear by put the state as about a lead Democratic state, averaging out all three polls. Now going to the state of Michigan. Michigan is concerning for Democrats because there are a lot of voters who are opposing Joe Biden. Joe Biden won the state by 3% against Donald Trump in 2020, or about 155,000 votes. However, Detroit has been a concern for Democrats. Detroit has one of the highest, if not the highest, Arab American populations in the United States for any large city. And we saw in the Michigan primaries, about 14% of primary voters, or more than 100,000 Democrats, voted uncommitted, which means they were not committed to any candidate. A lot of these voters were out of Detroit, where Democrats gained a lot of their votes, especially in the city of Dearborn, with its about 150,000 residents, a majority of them are Arab American. And actually, the uncommitted vote won that st- won that city, I believe, by f- a margin of 56 to 40. In other words, Trump ac- uh, Biden actually won, Biden actually lost the city by 16 points in a Democratic primary. That is remarkably concerning for Joe Biden and his chances in 2020. Polling also suggests that Trump is pretty much destroying Joe Biden in pretty much every poll. We do see that one poll right now does suggest it to be even. And one poll uh, from Biden against Haley suggests that Biden is actually up by 9%. But the totality of the polling does suggest that Trump will win the state of Michigan by about a lead to likely margin. I'm going to put it as lead because I really don't think Trump will win the state by a likely margin. But according to polling, it actually is possible. Now going to the next state, which will be the state of Minnesota. Minnesota has ab- about five polls, and they consistently show by up uh, by about two to three percent in four of the five polls. However, it does suggest Biden is up by eight percent in one of the polls, but that was about a five hundred likely voters, which is not necessarily the largest sample. I do think that the state will end up not looking too good for Democrats, although it is a state with the longest Democratic voting history. I do believe that. Again, that uh, that Walter Mondale was actually able to win the state in 1980 against Ronald Reagan. This state might end up breaking its Democratic voting history in the next 10 to 20 years, but nonetheless, I do believe that right now, as long well, long as well as the polling does suggest that Joe Biden is going to win the state of Minnesota by lead margin. Now going to the next state, which will be the state of Nevada. Now the state of Nevada here you see Trump is up tremendously in the polling. Trump is immensely popular in the state, and Joe Biden's not doing very well with Hispanic voters. Again, right, Biden's performance with Hispanic voters is lacking, with the latest New York Times slash Siena College poll suggesting again that Biden is not even winning a majority of minority voters, while he won that group by about 38% in 2020. That is some remarkably concerning news for Joe Biden. Again, polling does suggest that with a lot of Hispanic voters in Las Vegas, we do see that Trump is consistently up, ranging from 2% to upwards of 18%, though that was not a poll featuring Biden. The poll featuring Biden suggests that upwards, Biden is up down by 12% against Trump. While I don't think he will lose the state by 12 against Trump, I do think that right now it does not look too good for Joe Biden, and he, according to polling, would lose this state by a likely margin. Now, I'm going to flip back to the state of Arizona here. That was my mistake. You do see that, again, polling does not look too good for Joe Biden. He is losing by between what looks to be one point to upwards of nine points. 
but not a single poll suggests that he's actually going to win. That is remarkably concerning for the incumbent. Considering how much this state has swung towards Joe Biden, and how really how blue the state has became, became, and also how many moderate voters are in the state. The white non-college educated voters are not looking too good for Biden. Those are groups of voters that have been trending towards Donald Trump significantly in the past about a decade. And those are voters that will probably cause Biden the state if he does lose in 2024 in the state. Again, polling does not look good for Joe Biden in the state. And therefore, I do have Donald Trump winning here by according about a lean margin according to the polling. Now, one of the next states in here will be the state of New Hampshire. Now, New Hampshire does look very good for Joe Biden. And one of the reasons is that if you look at the New Hampshire primary, Haley actually support, uh, held about 43% of the total vote. And that's remarkable. There's a lot of opposition to Donald Trump in the state. Trump did make some foul remarks about the state about a year ago, and that's hurting him in the state of New Hampshire. There's also a tremendous amount of college-educated voters in the state. And again, the large cities, there's a lot of white voters with college degrees. And those are voters that have been trending towards Democrats in the past couple of decades. And Trump has only escalated that trend. I do believe that, again, accordingly with the polling, that but Joe Biden will probably win the state by about a lead to likely margin. So I'm going to put it in the lead Democratic column. Now going to the next state, uh, by, which will be the state of New Mexico. New Mexico here has Joe Biden up by ranging from 2% to 11%. However, the polls featuring Trump show consistently that Joe Biden is up by about 7 to, 8, 7 to about 10%, which is sufficient for a likely margin. Now, there are a lot of Hispanic voters in the state of New Mexico, which would make me sit think that perhaps the state will trend towards Donald Trump because of Biden's lacking performance with Hispanic voters. However, polls suggest that Joe Biden is hanging on just fine. There's no doubt that the state will go to Joe Biden, and right now it does look like a likely margin will be the margin Joe Biden wins the state by. Now going to the next state here, which will be the state of New York. New York, I don't think anyone doubts the fact that Trump will actually win the state. However, polling consistently suggests that Joe Biden is under 50%. And the one poll that does not suggest that is Seattle College, which which polled their results about what looks like to be six or seven months ago. Seattle College consistently polls the state and does not look too good for Joe Biden. He has pretty much been underperforming since that September poll. And that really some of the results in 2022 with Kathy Hoko only winning the state against Lee Zeldin by about 8% spells a lot of concern for Joe Biden. And if we look at the state of New York here, there really the New York City area has been shrinking in terms of population. There are a lot of voters who really did not like Democrats and backed the Democrats challengers or the Republicans back in 2022 on the House level. Democrats lost about four seats in 2022, and although they flipped the seat back, the seat that George Santos won in 2022, it still does not look very well for the Democratic Party, and Democrats are generally going to only win the seat of New York here by a likely margin. That is a concern for Democrats in the future. Now going to the state of North Carolina. North Carolina, again, this is a state where we do see that Trump, again, he didn't do too well there in 2020. He won the state by just 1.3%. However, polling consistently shows that Joe Biden is trailing Donald Trump by, by upwards of about 10%. And although I don't think he's going to lose by 10%, it does not look too good for Joe Biden. One of the reasons is that, again, there's a lot of voters, minority voters in areas like Charlotte and Wake County who are predominant in supporting for Joe Biden, who have since withdrew their support because of Joe Biden's handling of the israel Hamas war, and also because really a lot of minority voters are just not to engage with Joe Biden's policies, and they might just as well stay home for the 2024 general election, which would spell a lot of trouble for Joe Biden. And the state right now, according to polling at least, does 
go into the likely Republican column. Now the next state here is going to be the state of Ohio. The state of Ohio here is a bellwether. It has been a bellwether state for 15 straight election cycles before breaking its bellwether status back in 2020. Whether it will still be a bellwether in 2024, the answer is probably no. Trump will probably win the election, at least according to polling, but he's going to win the state by a tremendous margin. The most recent polls suggest that Trump is up by between 7 and 14 points against the incumbent. That is tremendous news because... Again, Democrats have been having lacking performances in the state of Ohio, specifically in two regions. The rural areas, what is considered the steel country here, bordering the state of West Virginia. Some of the other rural areas in the state, which generally have been trending towards the Republicans, filled with non-college graduate, graduated white voters, and also the working class voters here around Cleveland. That includes counties like Lorraine, Lake County, uh, Manhattan County, these are all areas that voted for Barack Obama in both 2008 and 2012. However, they are voting for Trump in some of these cases by tremendous margins. That is why that Joe Biden is not going to win the state in 2024, and he's going to have, frankly, a lacking performance. I did talk about the state of Iowa here. That's also in the likely Republican column. Now with four states left, Trump is at 243, Biden is at 213. All Trump needs to win is the state of Texas. And if we go to the next state here, that will be the state of Pennsylvania. Now polling in, uh, now, polling in the state of Pennsylvania also does not look too good for Donald Trump, uh, for Joe Biden. His chances ac- uh, against Donald Trump look very slim right now, according to polling. We see some of these polls are not necessarily between Biden and Trump, but still, Biden is down against Trump by substantial margins. Now, it is important to notice here that Trump is not at 50% in any of the polls, but nonetheless, Biden is falling far short at about 35% to about 43%. Now, in 2020, Democrats won the state of Pennsylvania by pretty much getting high turnout in the Philadelphia suburbs. Now, the Philadelphia county itself actually shifted towards Donald Trump, but turnout was very high across the more liberal areas of the state, and the rural areas, they're kind of maxed out for Trump, so they didn't, so really, Democrats were able to do well with their suburban areas. The white college graduated voters voted for Biden by substantial rates. However, again, it will be minority voters that caused trouble for Democrats, as they're traditionally very, very strong for Democratic candidates, now they're looking a bit shellacking for Joe Biden. Furthermore, there are a lot of white, non-college educated voters in the rural regions who are again willing to back Donald Trump. We do see that, again, there's a lot of suburban voters who are disengaged in the voting process. They're essentially, in their opinion, picking between two poisons, Joe Biden and Donald Trump, and that's their main concern, and instead of voting for Biden like they did in 2020, they're just not going to vote, and that's essentially going to cost Joe Biden ballots, and ultimately the state, according to polling, is going to go to the likely Republican column. That puts Trump at 262 electoral votes. He needs just one of the three remaining states to end up winning the presidency. The next state uh, covered will be the state of, I believe, the state of Texas here. Again, polling here is actually somewhat inconsistent. We do see that Biden is actually ahead against Haley in some of the polls. However, it does look like polling against Trump here. Biden does not win any of the polls against Donald Trump. However, the results here are actually surprisingly close. We do see that Biden is not doing as poorly as he is in some of the other states compared with his 2020 performance. Trump is still winning the state, obviously, but he won the state by by about 5.5% in 2020 and that he is maintaining about a consistent performance. We do see that the shifts here, there's a lot of Hispanic voters who are not inclined to vote for Democrats. We saw about a 55% shift towards Donald Trump in Star County, which is pretty much the largest shift in the entire country. We see a lot of counties, for example, if we look at the county of Webb, that has a pretty substantial population there as well, trended 28 points, Hispa- uh, a lot Hista- Hispanic dominant, trended 28 points t- towards Donald Trump. Another county, Hidalgo County, with more than 200,000 votes, trended 23 points towards Donald Trump. And these are areas where Joe Biden is going to 
be very lacking in in 2020. He may be able to counter that with some more Democratic trends in areas like Dallas, Tarrant, Denton, Collin, as well as Houston, San Antonio, and Austin. But nonetheless, he's definitely going to lose the state in 2024, especially with the national environment. Therefore, I'm going to place the state as a likely state for Donald Trump. Now, there are two more states here, the states of Virginia and the state of Wisconsin. First off, in the state of Virginia here, we do see polling does not look too good again for Joe Biden. He is up by at most 6% in the state. In fact, some polling against Haley actually suggests that Haley is defeating Joe Biden. However, Haley will not be a candidate. Biden will be. So, uh, the state is actually very against Trump, but some of the polling does suggest that the state is within single digits and within reach or within the margin of error for Donald Trump. We do see that Democrats generally gain a tremendous amount of their support in Fairfax County, which is pretty much bordering Washington, D.C., very liberal region. There's a lot of rural counties in the state, but not nearly enough for Democrats to actually end up winning, uh, losing the state against the Republicans. The state has been trending towards the Republican Democrats in the past about three to four decades, and really, Democrats don't have any chances of actually losing the state, and Republicans are pretty much screwed here. Nevertheless, we do see that Democrats are not doing so well because I th I think it's also because of the fact that there's a lot of minority voters who are disengaged to actually vote in the general election in areas like Fairfax, which are bordering the Washington, D.C., and there's a lot of white rural uh, non-college educated voters who are very inclined to end up backing Donald Trump. And again, some of the polling here does not look too good for Joe Biden. He only leads by about 3-4% to on polling aggregate. Finally, in the state of Wisconsin. Now here is the state of Wisconsin. Wisconsin, again, you can see for about 10 straight polls here, Donald Trump has had a lead over Joe Biden, and that's really unsurprising. We do see that Trump pretty much is leading everywhere across the country. Joe Biden's handling of the Israel and Hamas war has been troubling for many American voters, especially younger voters who are disengaged to vote for Biden again. However, if we look at some of the results here, you can see that Trump is not win winning by as much as some of the polls in Michigan or Pennsylvania suggest. Again, there's a lot of white uh, non-college educated voters who are willing to vote for Trump in the rural areas. However, one of the areas that Joe Biden could be w looking for to pick up some votes are the wild counties, Waukesha County, Ozaki County, and Washington County. These are areas that have been trending towards the Democrats. Although these are still Republican vote pockets, they're not as favorable to Republicans as they once were. And these are some areas where I think Joe Biden could actually improve it. However, the rural areas, as well as some of the Democratic areas themselves, might actually look very bad for Joe Biden in, in 2024. So here's what the polling suggests. It does suggest that Trump will win the presidential election 312 to 226. Again, as of the polling right now, it looks really concerning for Joe Biden. However, will polling be completely accurate? Probably not. And you know what actually decides election? You getting out and voting in November. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Be sure to click out the video here and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.